Opening image. Theme stated. Setup. Catalyst. Resisting change. Debate. End of act one. End of debate. Break into act two. B story. Diving in. Foreshadowing. Midpoint. Trouble. First half of efforts turn on characters. All is lost. Dark night of the soul. Break into act three. Revelation. Finale. Resolution. Final image. By the end of this video, you are going to have a clear understanding of how to properly structure your screenplay using pen and paper or a computer. You'll learn how you can apply this to your screenplay. Screenwriting structure is the single most important element when it comes to writing a successful feature film. Over the years, Blake Snyder's Beat Sheet has become the foundation for commercial contemporary cinema. He asserts that in order for our screenplay to be a commercial success, it must have a structural order of operations that dives deeper into the contemporary three-act structure. This system revolutionized the way filmmakers and enthusiasts viewed feature films in Hollywood. Hello everyone, Alan Northern here giving you filmmaking tips and tricks. And today, I've got yet another incredible tool for you to add to your filmmaking utility belt. This is a filmmaking tool that is meant to work hand in hand with your film treatment in order for you to fully flesh out your screenplay. It's Hollywood's secret weapon, the beat sheet. If you're excited to learn or relearn the beat sheet, just give this video a like and let's get started. Story beat one, opening image. This beat will be found on page one. The purpose of this beat is to establish the tone, mood, style, and establish the stakes of your film to inform the audience of the kind of film they're about to watch. This basically lets your audience know what they're in for. This gives the screenwriter the opportunity to establish who the characters are before the events in your story change them forever and force them to become better or worse versions of themselves. The matching beat for the opening image is the final image at the end of the film. And since the protagonist of your story will inevitably change by the powerful events in your story, the opening image and your final image should be opposites. Snyder calls them your film's bookends. Now we know that good stories have well-rounded character arcs. We also know that a character arc is the result of their journey, giving us a character's personal growth or mental emotional decline or deterioration. These two beats are a way to make clear to your audience how your characters have changed as a result of their journey. Your opening can also give your audience hints into the Act 3 story revelation, as you can see here in Christopher Nolan's Interstellar and in The Prestige. Story Beat 2, theme stated. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. The theme or thematic premise is the omnipresent invisible current driving your entire story. The theme of your film will be mentioned, discussed, or alluded to around the first four to five percent of your screenplay. Someone, usually not the main character, will pose a question or make a statement, usually to the main character, that is the theme of the movie. All except the most valuable one, the transported man. Well, I won't forgive myself for selling my greatest trick. Even for your daughter. It won't be obvious. It'll be conversational. An offhand remark that the main character doesn't quite get at the moment, but which will have far-reaching and meaningful impact later. Snyder refers to this as the thematic premise. This is the argument posed by the screenwriter. The pros and cons of living a particular kind of life or pursuing a specific goal. The passion for perfecting their shows transforms two magicians into dangerous entities who gives more love to their magic tricks and rivalry than they give to their family. At its core, they're placing their career above their family. So Christopher Nolan's cinematic masterclass is a metaphor about what will happen if you deem your career more valuable than your family. Obsession turns you into a completely different person. Don't know? Theme is a human condition lesson that the filmmaker is trying to teach. 
it ties all of the sequences into a unified film. The emotional, intellectual, or spiritual issue at the core of your story. It is the invisible thread that gives your story weight. If you do not have a well fleshed out theme or thematic premise in your first draft, according to both Snyder and Robert McKee, it's all right. Odds are you don't have the whole picture until you've actually undergone all of the sequences in your story, because according to them, you may not have it yet. And I've also realized it with myself. As I'm writing the first draft of my story, I'm not quite crystal clear on what the theme may be yet. But by the second draft, I can hone it in and make some rewrites in order to make this abundantly clear to my audience. Story beat three, the setup. This is the first 10 to 12 pages of your screenplay, and the objective is to grip your audience and shake them up. You need to grab your audience or you risk losing their attention. This is where you set up the main players in your story and establish the stakes in your film, so that by the first 10 minutes you've already met or referenced all of the main players in your story. Players also should exhibit behaviors or characteristics that needs to be addressed later on. You're showing the audience why your hero needs to change in order to achieve his goal. What's missing in the life of your hero? Here we see the world before the adventure starts, or as Snyder calls it, the thesis. The calm before the storm. Because if the events that follow in your story did not occur, your characters would not change. Story beat four, Catalyst. This beat should occur around page 12, or page 20 or 21 if you're Christopher Nolan, but you really don't want it to occur after page 12 because according to Snyder, your story will drag. So we've set up our story, we've set up our characters and characteristics and faults that they may have. We've set up our dominoes and now it's time to knock them down. This is the point in your story where your MC is completely destabilized by an event that causes a fundamental change in the way that their lives operate. In other words, this is where something tremendous happens in your MC's life an earth-shattering event that shoves your MC straight into their perilous journey. Story beat five, resisting change, debate. So the debate is gonna be how your MC thinks that he's going to move forward and get closer to his outer goal. And it should be in some way, shape, or form tied into your film's thematic premise. Here, your MC outwardly explores or debates the wrong way of going about solving his problem. He swears up and down that the steps that he's about to take is gonna lead him to his success, but he'd be wrong. He's going about life incorrectly because he has the wrong idea about how to fix his problem. Since he hasn't endured the hardships that the rest of your story has in store, the MC still doesn't have a true grasp on how he should achieve his goal. And that's because at this point, your MC might not be sure what his actual true goal is. This can also be an internal debate that has large scale implications that will be brought to the surface later in your screenplay. Quick tip, in a story where your character will survive or overcome, the MC will generally take steps in the right direction overall. But the idea is that they're simply going about it the wrong way. As long as your MC's actions align with your film's thematic premise, he'll survive, conquer, and dominate. Whereas in a tragedy, your MC will progressively take steps in the wrong direction that directly opposes the thematic premise of your film until his actions eventually lead to his inevitable death. Story beat six, end of act one, end of debate. Here, the MC makes a definitive choice. He makes a decision to go about solving life's issues. Depending on your screenplay, the MC will take a step in the right direction that brings him to the next beat of the film. So yes, what he came up with may be a partial solution to his problem, but he doesn't have the full answer yet. The MC discovers a false solution that drives a wedge between him and his true goal. That's why you need the rest of your story for him to make some course corrections. The more drastic those course corrections, the better your screenplay. Story beat seven, break into act two. This is where you dive headfirst into your upside down world you've established in act one. The MC must take a definitive step into this beat. He cannot be lured, wandered, or tricked into it, no. The MC finds this new path and begins to embark on or execute the plans that they set in motion at the very end of act one. The purpose of this beat is to truly identify what your MC really needs in order to win and be successful at life and identify your MC's faults to your audience. 
any faults or any ticks, this may ultimately be a portion of what is holding your main character back. If your thematic premise was pretty subtle, please feel free to revisit it here through the lens of your main character. Give him a thematic premise checkup. See how your MC's doing. Put an obstacle in the protagonist's way and see how he responds. They still holding on to the same habits? All right, I'm out in public. Everybody else loves it. Why are you being like this, Alfred? I had a terrible ordeal today. Or are they moving and operating differently now? Fellow, we'll just put a rug there. Sit down. Give me that. I'll give you 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Headline? Spider-Man, hero or menace? Exclusive Daily Bugle photos. Menace? He was protecting that armor I'll tell you what, Atticus, you take the pictures, I'll make up the headlines, okay? All right, that okay with you? Yes, sir. How they respond will greatly influence how intensely you're able to beat them up later. It'll decide whether they just need a gentle push forward or an earthquake. I like earthquakes. Just keep this in mind, and this goes for all of your story beats moving forward. The more you set up, the more you will have to pay off later. Story beat eight, B story. This is the love story. What are you doing around here? I'm, uh, I'm begging for a job. How about you? The essential break required from the intense A story. Now, don't get me wrong. Each and every element in this beat sheet was created in order to push your main character forward so that he's able to figure out what he has to do in order to accomplish his goal. Even though the B story is here to give us a little break from the A story, the B story should have the pure essence of our theme. This love story provides an open forum for you to discuss the theme of the film openly. Our protagonist will draw his strength from the characters, concepts, and lessons that he's learned from characters in the B story to help push him into Act 3 and eventually achieve victory in the end. According to Snyder, we may visit characters who are the upside-down versions of those characters who inhibit the world of Act 1. Story Beat 9. Diving in fun and games. Here, we arrive at the reason why you're writing your screenplay to begin with. Here is the heart of your screenplay. Have fun with this portion, guys. You should be exhilarated to write this section. This is the essence of your movie poster. This is also where most of the moments in your film trailer will come from. This is the reason why audiences all around the world are going to think your film is awesome. Impressive! This is the heart of your movie. Here we take a break from the heavy stakes of the movie and showcase intriguing elements about your film. Here we see what your film's big idea is all about. Story beat 10, foreshadowing. This is a portion of your diving in section that occurs at the very tail end of it. This is where the main character begins to realize that he may have a deep rooted issue that may be preventing him from achieving what he wants. He organically begins to actively work towards becoming better. Here is your MC's first real attempt to fight back against his central conflict. Now this section may not be long. It may be just a second, depending on how your story is structured, but unfortunately your MC is still trying to figure out how he should go about life correctly. He in fact took a huge step towards the right direction or a huge step towards the wrong direction if it's a tragedy. Think of it as your MC trying to cover up his injuries with a band-aid when in fact, he needs surgery. Because of this, the protagonist's attempt to solve core issues with his main supporting characters awkwardly fails. Is it yours? For a while. Well, then you should keep it, Roman. I'm in my room. In your apartment? I gave it up. Why? I'm going away. Where? This gives the audience a glimpse of what life could be like if the MC lived up to his true potential. Why, Peter, you're bleeding. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I stepped off a curb and got clipped by one of those bike messengers. Oh, let me see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that looks awful. No, it's nothing. I'll get the first aid kit. Then we'll say grace. This is the boy's first Thanksgiving in this apartment, and we are going to do things properly. How did you say that happened? Bike messenger. Story beat 11. Midpoint. 
Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because according to Snyder, the midpoint until your all is lost section are the most difficult portions of your screenplay. At the midpoint, we have a peak in our story. This is where the writer raises the stakes. Fun and games are over. This is where your protagonist will experience his highest positive emotional high, where the hero seemingly peaks, though it is a false peak, bad guys may be temporarily defeated, or the protagonist will experience his lowest emotional low when the world collapses around them, though it is a false collapse. Uh, grab the attendance ceremony. Um, oh, I met another girl, Dad. I, uh, I really think this is the one. Name's Lois. The matching beat to the midpoint is all is lost. The rule is, it's never as good as it seems to be at the midpoint, and it's never as bad as it seems to be at the all is lost. This is their relationship with one another. Story beat 12. First half of efforts, turn on characters. Bad guys close in. Doubt, jealousy, anguish, shame, and internal discord begins to erupt around our main characters. Meanwhile, the antagonists of our story band together and plan their merciless onslaught on our main characters. They bring in the big guns. In other words, they strike the MC and the MC's allies when they're at their weakest. The forces that are aligned against the hero internal and external, tighten their grip and choke out our MC and his allies. And when the protagonist's descent feels like it can't get any worse, it does. Story beat 13, all is lost. Remember when I mentioned in the break into act two section how the protagonist's response to an obstacle prompted by the thematic premise will decide how intensely you must beat down your character later? Well, this is where you do it. So now think about what you like to do in order to break down your main character. Got it? Good. Now multiply that by four. What is the worst possible thing that could happen to your main character? Yeah, pick that. This must reinforce how important your thematic premise is to your main character while keeping him alive. If you're trying to kill your main character, don't do it just yet. Death is most certainly involved in this beat here. All is lost is synonymous with death. So the protagonist's best friend, family member, or character who your protagonist just can't live without is brutally murdered or something like that. Now it doesn't have to be a literal murder if your film is a lighthearted comedy or your film's tone wouldn't work very well with that kind of darkness. If you have one of these kinds of stories, then the point here would be to allude or strongly suggest the death of something. The death of a relationship, the death of an ideal, the death of something. This is meant to represent to the audience that the MC's old way of thinking is dead. Family comes first. Family comes first. Snyder calls it the whiff of death. Story beat 14, The Dark Knight of the Soul. Here is the moment that you really need your audience to truly feel what your MC is feeling. Because this answers the question, how does your character experiencing this moment feel about what just occurred? It can last a few seconds or even 10 minutes. This is your main character's deepest, darkest moment externalized. Really put this moment on display for your audience. He's hopeless, clueless, wasted, beaten down, buried and burned but then he'll rise up from the ashes and your mc will emerge reborn afresh which brings your protagonist to your act three revelation the mc's deepest darkest moments leads him to this aha moment the solution to his problems thanks to the characters found in the b story thanks to all of the conversations discussing the heart of the movie thanks to every single painful loss the external story, A story, and the internal story, B story, collide. Tell me, would it be so dangerous to let Mary Jane know how much you care? Everybody else knows. I'll be right back. The synthesis of Act 1 and Act 2 gives your MC this startling revelation. He's dug down deep and found this solution. 
Now all he has to do is apply what he's learned in the grand finale, Snyder. The classic fusion of A and B is the hero getting the clue from the girl, B story, that makes him realize how to solve both, beating the bad guys and winning the heart of his beloved. An idea to solve the problem has emerged. Synthesis. Story beat 16. Finale. Resolution. This is where the lessons learned in Act 1 and in Act 2 are applied. The A story and the B story end in triumph for our hero, or the hero is defeated. The original source of the problem is typically dispatched of for this new world order to exist. This must be done in an emotionally satisfying manner. Your audience must certainly feel something here. The best endings will be somewhat of a hybrid melancholy mix of a super emotional high and an extreme low, as this feeling mimics many of real life's finales. Don't tell Harry. <laughs> Story beat 17, final image. This will be the opposite of your opening image and be proof to your audience needed that tells them that change has occurred. Now I'm gonna answer one final question for you and it's called an act break. What's an act break? We've got one after act one and another one right after act two. Some act breaks are more obvious than other act breaks, but an act break is simply the moment where we exit the old world in the previous act and enter the new world in the next act. Act break smoothly transitions our audience to the next phase of our story. Thesis, act one, antithesis, act two, and synthesis, act three. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll talk to you next time. See ya.